Katie from Tataki Dearest, and welcome everybody to another episode of World of War. This is a series based in Japan that I do every month where I go out into the world and shop for different items and products and bring them on camera. A lot of them may look bizarre and useless, but a lot of them may just look a little different and surprisingly useful. So I have a few products that I want to share with you guys here today, and two of them are actually given as a gift by my friend Charlotte. If you guys want to go check her out, I went to go visit her. She's like, hey, you should put this in your series and I'm gonna go test them out. So as many of you know, Japan is very prone to earthquakes and it's always important to get your safety backpack or a kit with you just in case. But more importantly, it's also good to earthquake proof your house. And so Japan actually has a lot of things to help your furniture to stay still when there is an earthquake. So I have a lot of stuff around the house already and I thought it was really important because last week we had a magnitude seven and they were predicting that another big earthquake was gonna happen the following week, which luckily it didn't. We had like three or fours, which is like nothing in Japan. But here is just some examples of stuff that I have in the house. So we have this one, which is called the stabilizing board to prevent fall of furniture. That's a mouthful. I wish they had a more simpler name for it. And I've already used one of them. They come in packs of two. Since they didn't give this an easier term, we're just gonna call it a uh, earthquake board. So this has a few like jagged lines and it's angled. And so you put this underneath probably like a bookshelf or a cabinet, something that is like flat on the ground, not on carpet. What this does is change the center of gravity so that when the floor shakes then it forces the book cabinet or whatever you have this under to move against the wall rather than topple over and this only cost me a dollar for two of them and a dollar can go a long way by saving you thousands of dollars of damage in the future so i actually have this underneath my bookcase and a lot of other things like our tv stand and some other cabinets that we have around the house and i'm gonna just show you how i do this so this is one of our drawers in our bathroom and I haven't put any under here yet, but you would just take this and then just kind of slide it under until it starts to just fit. You might have to lift up your furniture for this to work. It should be able to keep this cabinet safe and have to push it up against the wall. Yeah, this is really useful. I have this all around the house. Here's just a couple more I have. This is for our uh, place where we keep the dishes. And then this is also our water tank. The only way I could really test this out is if I would shake it. So I'm actually trying to shake this with all of my strength and even then it's not really moving that much. Without these, they do typically shake. The other type that I have is called an earthquake resistant mat and they are transparent and they're very, very sticky and you put them underneath pretty much anything that you want. You don't have to use the whole thing. Sometimes what I do is I'll take one and cut it up uh, depending on the size of what I need to be kept still. So I have it on a lot of my figures. I actually have it underneath a lot of them so that hopefully they don't fall over and I've tried shaking them off as much as I could and they're pretty secure from what I can see. I mean, this is just another precaution. Okay, so just as a demonstration on a smaller scale, I'm going to use my glue stick and I'm going to be shaking up my table, which is not secured yet, by the way, so I should probably do that. But I'm gonna shake it up just as a before and after demonstration. Yeah, so it fell over. So now I'm going to add the earthquake mat. Let's see what happens. Nothing. It's pretty much good. This should give you an idea of how much it really just kind of saves some of your stuff. So just going to take, take, take this off. Oh God. Oh <gasps> no! That's a real advertisement. It even took the bottom off. So I have a couple of the mats under this figure. I also have a little one at the edge of this box right here so that this one hopefully doesn't topple over. I mean, again, I'm shaking it and I, wow, there's already some stuff falling, but not my figures. They are still secured. Now I can't say if all of this stuff is 100% foolproof, but it does make some sort of difference. And it is only a $1 investment into something that you'll spend thousands on. So I'm just gonna review it right now. Is it useful? I don't think I can make it any more clear. I mean, when you live in Japan, earthquakes are bound to happen and you don't want to take the risk, especially when you get bookshelves like this. And I actually bought this off of Amazon, but when we got into the apartment, I had this bookshelf that is actually built into the wall. So if you're going to get cabinets and stuff, which I'm sure you will, you should get it. And is it worth the price? It's only a dollar. Imagine how much money you'd be spending if all your stuff just came crashing down. Fun fact, I just found out the other day that because of all of the earthquakes in Japan, there is now a service that will fix your anime figures if they fall over and break from an earthquake. Does it work? Again, don't know if it's 100% foolproof, but it works enough. And will I keep it? 
Of course. I mean, you know, I bought this way before Y Japan and I just thought it was important to show you guys. Okay, now for some fun stuff. As I mentioned before, Sharla had gifted me a few things in here. One of them is this beauty right here. I haven't even opened it from the bag yet. This is a chocolate fondue pack of heel. Pack of heel? What? Oh God, again with the English, why? I had to ask Sharla what this was because I, I wasn't entirely sure, but this is supposed to be kind of like something to exfoliate your feet. It's like a foot mask and it exfoliates your foot or your heel in this case, but it's supposed to look like chocolate. And from what I understand, you can't eat it. Not that I would even if you could because you're putting it on your foot. Good Lord. Um, so how do I do this? I'm just going to call her. Hey. Hi, I'm recording my Y Japan right now. I have your products on here and I just needed some help. How am I supposed to do this? Do I just dip my foot in it or? You have to put 90 degrees, like basically boiling water into the little package up until the line and then let it sit there for five minutes. And then when the sticker changes from white to blue, that means it's ready and you can put your heel in it. So after you've dipped your he heel like in and out two to three times, let it sit on your foot for like five to 10 minutes all right yeah that's all i needed um but thank you good luck all right say bye, bye to charla everyone thank you charla so i'm gonna go dip my foot in chocolate and see if this is gonna make me feel refreshed great all right so this is the sticker that charla was mentioning and she said that it goes from blue to white so i'm just gonna open this up but what the hell is this oh my god i have to put it up to the line it says at least 90 degrees i'm sure this is way past that wow that that just went right to white didn't it? Well, I don't want to dip my heel in boiling water, so I'm just let this sit for just a little bit. Okay, so a million years have gone by, and here's the final result. Um, that that looks more like chocolate that like I threw down the drain and it hardened, but I'm gonna stick my foot in it. I think I did an oopsie putting boiling hot water in here because that took almost an hour to cool down. Now I don't even know if it's a little too hard for me. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna go put my foot in it now. Okay. molded my heel instead. Oh man, this hardened too much. God damn it. I'm sorry, Sharla. Maybe I overcomplicated this a lot more than I needed to. Man, I was really looking forward to the chocolate foot. I'm so mad. Never thought I'd be angry about not dipping my foot in chocolate. So that was a complete disaster. So I'm not going to review it, but I will review this. Should you subscribe? But maybe some of you... I don't know. Anyways, uh, I'm going to just go on to the last product that Sharla gave me. This one, I shouldn't fuck up, especially considering the fact she gave me a one, two, three, four, five packets of bath powder that apparently smell like meat and rice, some curry. Oh, more chocolate. Ha, huh, thank you. More curry and ramen. So this is a lot and I don't know which one I'm gonna use. I'm just gonna kind of put them all in their own bowls and smell them and then mix them all up and bathe in it. Yeah, I, I gotta make up for it. I'm so sorry, Sharla. I'm now going to try out four very decadent flavors and smells of meat, curry, chocolate, and ramen. My favorite combination for any proper dinner. Uh, let's start off with the ramen, shall we? Why is it pink? Whoa! Oh my god, that is straight up ramen. You know what? But it's not good ramen. Ugh, something's not right with this. Now it's like you can smell everything else that was in here, any sort of like chemicals, but if I just looked at this, you would just think it's just normal bath powder. But then you smell it and it's just absolute ass. Hold on, let me just smell all of these because I'm curious. I'm gonna smell this chocolate one. Oh, that does not smell like chocolate. That just smells like burnt plastic. Why does it smell like that? Okay, uh, let's try curry. And I don't know why Charlotte felt like she needed to give me two curries, but something feels like I'm gonna be taking a bath in this one instead. Oh, I don't even need to put my nose in the bag. I can smell that. You know what? That is the most accurate to curry I've smelled. If if I was blindfolded and didn't know that this was bath powder, I would think that there was curry in front of me. You know, I can't tell if I like it or not because I know that it's bath powder. So seeing bath powder smelling like curry is somewhat disgusting for me. This is weird, man. <laughs> All right, and gyudon tastes bath powder. Gyudon is just like, just really good meat. That is actually the worst one. It's stuck in my head now. You know, you smell something so like rancid, then like even when you hold your breath, you still smell it in your brain. That's exactly what that's doing to me right now. They are literally all pink inside.
<laughs> Anyways, if you really want to prank someone and get the worst smelling one, go get this one. Take like one of those aesthetic bottles with bath powder in it, but just replace it with this because it's pink inside. I'm sure if you want someone to hate you forever, this will do the job. I never thought that the curry one would be the best one. So you know what? I might just take a bath with this one. And you know what? I'll wash my hands with the ramen. Okay, got a bowl of water here. Let me just mix in some ramen. Oh wow, when it hits the water, it actually almost looks like ramen broth. Actually, no, now that I don't know what this looks like. No, ramen does not look like this. That was a little too orange than what I expected. Okay, let me just uh, wash my hands in here. I don't feel clean doing this. You know when you go to Lush and then the employee like washes your hands regardless if you say yes or no? This is like that, but like you really <laughs> don't want to fucking do it. And she pulls this shit out and now I just feel pissed. Oh my God. Mm, you know what? No, I take that back. The texture of my hands is actually getting a lot more smoother. Water though, hmm, that's a questionable color. Oh my god. When it's on your skin, the smell gets worse. <coughs> it doesn't smell like ramen anymore. What the fuck is this shit? Why would you do this, Japan? Why would you make a bath salt that is that is ramen. When you have food that's been stuck in your uh, in your drain for a while and you need to clean that out or like turn on the food processor or whatever, or the food grinder, it smells like that. And it, it's like food that's been stuck in your drain for a few days. Do I really want to take a bath in curry? Am I really going to do that to myself? How long is the stench going to stay? I don't know. Uh, and I look so nice today too. And I don't want to smell like shit. We're doing it. Curry bath powder. <laughs> Hate! I hate this color. I hate this. Why am I doing this to my perfectly good bath? Ugh. Why do I hate my life? This is my favorite bathing suit too. It smells so bad. This looks like I just had some massive diarrhea in the bath. <laughs> I cannot relax in here because it's weird. It smells exactly like watered down curry, which I've never had before. But my legs look so good right now. Just Say that. Ew, it's actually getting worse. It's because of the steam that's happening in this bathroom right now. It's like spreading the smell everywhere. The moisture has curry in it. This is the most unenjoyable bath that I've ever had in my life. Okay, I'm gonna review the curry bath right now because I just want to get out. Fuck the buzzer. Was it worth the price? 300 yen? I don't even think that this should be on the shelf. The moment anyone sees any bath or water in this color, they're not gonna get anywhere near it. So it's not even funny. Oh man, my skin is rough now. It's one of those soaps. Did it work? Sadly, yes. The other bath powders didn't smell like what they were advertised. Not that I'm concerned about false advertising for food bath powder, but I'm just saying that the curry one works if you want a curry bath. But why would you want to unless you really don't like yourself today? And is it useful? You tell me. Does this look useful? Anyways, I'm gonna go get out of this bath now and I'm gonna go take a shower and do my best to get this curry off of me because I just, I wanna cry right now. Seriously. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!